The Abolis of Musica. We finally have made it to this point. We finally made it to a point where there's a lot of make or break here. A couple albums ago we said that we've reached the point of no return, but so far we've realized that a lot of the folks that mentioned that have been kind of guilty of perhaps not looking at albums such as Divine Intervention and uh, Undisputed Attitude with the right frame of mind, through the right glasses, so to speak. Whenever we reach this point, it's pretty universal that this is another love em or hate em style album from Slayer. And I think one of the main reasons why the fan base started to get a little bit antsy was because uh, there seemed to be a lot of these that were coming in the past, you know, recent few. But with this one, it was a little bit more decisive and uh, very much so more on the negative front than on the positive. This is an album that truly, truly, if Undisputed Attitude is not the sort of red-haired stepchild or the ugly stepsister of the Slayer catalog, then the Obelisk in Music is. This was an experiment, plain and simple. This was one that was certainly not necessarily, I guess, designed to be this way. It was not something that was really influenced by anybody more than the band themselves. It was something that Jeff Hammond actually sort of constructed, sort of tweaked with, and was he's actually responsible for a majority, if not all, of the music on this disc which is kind of interesting. It's interesting to note that the gentleman decided that he was going to try something new. It's bold, and it's risky. There are some risks that pay off, and this one didn't. Jeff, buddy, rest in peace. We love you. But man, I'm just, I'm not a fan of this album. You might wonder why, and you might think, well, why are you being so... So one-sided about this, considering so far throughout this discography, you've been pretty balanced. And it's principally based around just me getting out my personal feelings beforehand. Just taking care of this right now. I'm not a fan of the disc. The reason for this is because Slayer really had maintained that reputation throughout every, every single one of their albums, even through ones such as South of Heaven and Divine Intervention, which showcased some deviation, which showcased some change, which really showcased a lot of... Uh, a sort of building blocks toward maybe trying to do something new, something different to the sound. And they attempted to do that with this disc, and it came off sounding a little bit too much like what was just starting to get big at the time, which was new metal. It has a little bit of that tone to it, a little bit of that twinge. There's an aggression that's in there that is different uh, than what you were hearing from the new metal bands. It's not like we're talking about Slayer diving into rap territory or anything like that. Not by any stretch of the imagination, but still, it was one that was really matching the tone a little bit. It was one that seemed like it was right there on the fringe line, and that made them kind of a bit of a target. It made them a bit of a target not only by their own fans, but it also made them a target by new metal fans. It's kind of strange how things work out. The next album that you would see from Slayer ended up taking them even further up than through the moon, but with this disc, they certainly uh, showcased and perpetuated that they did have a little bit of diversity and dynamacy, but the songwriting on this just did not feel as strong as it really could have been. This is an experiment that had every potential to work, but it just felt like it was backed by a weak bunch of songs that were so drastically out of character for this band, that were so drastically different for this band. Think about Elodie Divinium and Samus. And I know, we're supposed to be focusing on the year, I believe, 1998. And we're speaking about an album from 2011 that has been referenced to death on this channel. But it's a true statement. It's really an album that can accurately show a band that decides to attempt something new, that decides to incorporate a brand new sound into their pre-existing one, and that very idea backfiring on them and really causing a massive backlash. It's very similar to what happened here. This is an album that was met with some backlash, and it was mainly because it was an album that didn't feel like a Slayer disc to a lot of individuals. The flow on this album was also extremely disjointed as well. It seemed as though it just sort of jumped from one tonal pitch to another. It just sort of went all over the place and didn't have a very smooth transition among, its, uh, among itself. And you might say for a Slayer album, that's kind of a stupid thing to complain about. But 
if you listen to the remainder of the catalog that had been available up until this point, each of them still had a very, very smooth approach to the uh, difference between one song and the next, you know, the, the way in which it moved through the entirety of the record. It had a very smooth feel to it. It was all fucking insanity. It was all crazy. It was 100% blistering, but it had a nice flow to go along with it. That's kind of where that hairline comes into play. It's kind of where that hairline really does come into play whenever you do something like this, whenever you sample something new, is the fact that you have that risk and run that risk of it backfiring principally because it just feels too all over the place. It feels too much as though it doesn't know where it's going and it barely can recall where it's been. That's what this album is kind of an exercise of. This is an album that feels like it doesn't know where it's going with the sound, and it doesn't recall later on where it's really been throughout the course of its previous duration. By all means, the uh, Albalis in Musica is not the worst record that I've ever heard. It just happens to be the worst Slayer record that I've ever heard. It's something that whenever I reviewed this first a long, long time ago on a long forgotten channel, Probably should have been stated, but wasn't, principally because we all, at one point, were younger and dumber. This is a disc that just does not feel like it has that same punch to it. It's one that instead feels a little bit devoid of it. There are some good tracks on it. There are some music that has a little bit of groove. This is actually Slayer taking that thrash element, adding a little bit of groove, and it works only in choice moments as opposed to albums such as South of Heaven, which were able to infuse a little bit more groove or traditional standard heavy metal into the thrash sound, uh, maybe with a little bit of a doom aftertaste or a sludgy aftertaste, and it actually coupled quite nicely. But again, it's because I feel that the overall body of songs that were on that disc had a lot more that were actually you know, done with them. With this one here, they felt like experiments that kind of materialized and were worked on for a little bit and then were sort of just uh, made to end. They were made to end and they feel very premature and very rushed. And based around that, this album definitely feels and definitely suffers because of it. Overall, this is the bastard of the Slayer family. I will say, for all the times in which I have spoken about how Slayer is a little bit overrated and everything like that, this is actually the album that I think a lot of people will agree is definitely not one of their best, if not the absolute worst. This has just not very much to offer as far as the catalog was concerned, which really kind of sucked for the band and really kind of sucked for the fans, considering with the takeover of New Metal and everything, the Slayer is becoming a little bit more of a memory at this stage of the game. Uh, some people really forgot all about Unsputed Attitude whenever they found out it was a covers album, and now this one comes out and really doesn't fulfill expectations. But don't worry. Don't worry. Good things are about to happen right around the corner. The Slayer that you know and love is about to return. But it's going to take a little bit of controversy in order for that to happen. It's going to take some bad, bad timing in order for that to happen. Slayer is a band that has been sort of the king of bad timing. So, it's time for us to learn, ladies and gentlemen, Cover Killer Nation, just why God hates us all. So come on back, and we'll speak about that.